Hello and welcome to lecture 54 of the course theory of computation. In the previous lectures, we have seen uh, a few NP complete languages, right? So, we first saw a SAT, 3 SAT, CNF SAT were NP complete, which were based on Boolean formula. Then we saw that uh, we saw that clique was NP complete, we saw vertex cover was NP complete, we saw Hamiltonian path was NP complete. These were basically we were looking for certain type of structures in graphs, right. In this lecture, we are going to see a, a, another problem that is NP complete, which is subset sum, right. So, uh, as you will see, this has this problem has a different flavor uh, when you compare with the other two types. So, one was Boolean formula based and one was graph based. So, this is neither, this is a bit different type of problem. In fact, we have already seen this problem uh, when we introduced NP, but let us go over it again. So, subset sum is the problem of given a set S and a number T, right, a set S of numbers and a target number T. The goal is to determine if the set S has a subset which sums to the target sum, right. So, just for example, if uh, the set S is this 6, 20, 32, 16 and 5, then S and 54 is in subset sum because there is a subset that sums to 54. So, what is the subset? So, 20, 32 gives you 52, no that is not the one. So, 32, 16 gives you 48 and then 6 gives you 54. So, 32, 16 and 6 add up to 54. Then S and 42 also are a member is a member of subset sum because there are elements or there is a subset that sums to 42. So, 6, 20 and 16 add up to 42, right. However, S comma 34 is not a member of subset sum because there is no subset that adds up to 34. Right. So, the question is, is there a subset that adds up to the given value? Right. There is no subset that adds up to 1. Right. So, the question is given a subset and a target sum, sorry, given a set S and a target sum, is there a subset of S that sums to the target sum? Right. So, as you see, it is a completely different type of problem. There is no graphs involved, there is no Boolean formula involved. All that you have is a set S and a number T. Is there a subset of the set S? that adds up to the number t, right. And this problem is NP complete, right. And um, by following the, 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 the approach that we used in the previous lectures, we need to do two things. One is to show that this is an NP and second is to show that a known NP complete language reduces to subset sum. So, showing that it is an NP is something that we have already done in lecture 46, right. So, we do the standard guess and verify thing, we not deterministically select a subset of S, right, uh, by picking or not picking each element. So, S has let us say k elements, so we pick or not pick each element and then we get a subset of S and then we, uh, once we get the subset, we just check whether, verify whether the selected subset adds up to T, right. So, this is also straightforward. So, there is a non-deterministic guessing followed by a verification, right. And if the selected subset adds up to T, we accept, else we reject, right. So, if there is a subset, um, this will accept and if there is no subset, it will reject, right. So, this is a valid, uh, is a valid non-deterministic algorithm and it also runs in polynomial time. Hence, subset sum is an NP, right. So, now let us focus on the main part as always, the to show that it is, um, show that an NP complete language reduces to subset sum, right. So, we show that 3 set reduces to subset sum. Right? So, like, like many other cases before, we show that 3 set reduces to subset sum. So, what do we have to do? Given a Boolean formula or given a 3 CNF formula phi, we have to construct a, uh, a set S and a number T such that phi is satisfiable if and only if S contains a subset of, size t, uh, of some T. Phi is in 3 set if and only if S T is a yes instance of subset sum, right. So, let phi be a formula with n variables, ok. So, this is just some assumption and m clauses, right. So, it has, it is an, it is a 3 C n f formula, means, meaning it is an and of m clauses, m clauses, where each clause is an or of 3 literals, right. And overall, there are n variables. 
and uh, let us say the n variable let us just go one step further and let us say that the n variables are x 1, x 2, x 1, x 2, x n let these be the n variables. Okay? And um, so, we have an AND of clauses where each clause is an OR of 3 literals. Right? So, the literals could be each could be of the form x i or x i complement. Right? Now, we will say how to construct the subset sum instance. Right? So, it will it should have the property that so, we, we, should, pro, we should produce a set s and a number t such that if i is satisfiable the set, the set should have a subset that sums to t if i is not satisfiable the set should have a should not have any subset that sums to t right so we construct s with two times n plus m numbers right so where n is the number of clauses in the sat instance and m is sorry n is the number of variables and m is the number of clauses right two times n plus m right so the way we build the, the, the instance is like this, right. So, we will so look at this table that we have and what we will do is, um, so the, what we are going to do is to um, each row, so this, this table has 2 times m plus n rows and each row corresponds to one number in the set, right. So, these are, so each entry is like a, uh, like a 0 or 1 we have to read the the entries from left to right to uh, to 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 get the number that this row corresponds to right so it's just you just read it as a single number in fact you are read, go, like, even though it is only consisting of 0 and 1 we are going to be reading it as a decimal number not a binary number okay so this is very important we are going to be interpreting these numbers as decimal numbers so so there are decimal numbers that consists of only the digits 0 and 1. So, these are going to be the numbers that we have in the instance. Okay? So, let us see how to build this table and then I will again say how to interpret this. Right? So, this has n plus m columns. So, the first n columns are indexed by 1 to n. Right? The next m columns are indexed um, with the clauses c1 to cm right these m columns so we have n columns followed by m columns and the rows are actually there are there are 2n plus 2m rows and each of these corresponds to a number right so the first row is indexed y1 or it's labeled y1 second row is labeled z1 then we have y2 and z2 then we have y3 and z3 and so on till y n z n. So, that that marks the this boundary. Then we have, so this is 2 n numbers y 1 z 1, y 2 z 2, y 3 z 3 and so on up to y n z n. Then we have g 1 h 1, g 2 h 2 and so on up to g m h m. So, we have 2 n rows followed by 2 m rows. Right? And for convenience, we will divide this table like this or divide this matrix like this and that will help us uh, easily figure out what are the entries. Right? So, the, so, constructing the set is going to be like finding the numbers, but the numbers are just reading this, this table or matrix from left to right. So, we will be filling up this table. Right? So, the numbers are going to be, the numbers in the set are going to be y1, z1, y2, z2, y3, z3 up to y n, z n. Then g1, h1, g2, h2, g3, h3 up to g m, h m. So, these are going to be the 2 m plus 2 n numbers. right? And each number is like we read this number from left to right. Like, so, y1 is we just read this thing, read the first row from left to right. So, y1 is 1 0 0 0 0 0 up to n up to the nth place then followed by again 1 0 0 0. So, I will explain now how to fill the entries. So, first let us focus on this this quadrant of the table this 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 part which has 2 n the first 2 n rows and the first n columns right so it's very simple y1 z1 start with 1 and then all zeros z1 also is the same 
So in fact, y a, y and z are going to be identical. Y one z one is going to be identical in this part, and y two z two are also going to be identical, and y three z three. Everything is going to be identical this part. This is where they will differ. So in this part, y one and z one have a one under one, and rest zeros. Y two z two have a one under two. And the rest is zeros. Y three and Z three have a one under three, and the rest is zeros, right? And so on, until Y n and Z n, they have all like they, they, so so. These I could I could also have filled zeros here because like a leading zero does not change the number, right? So zero followed by one zero one zero zero is the same as hundred, right? So I can fill leading zeros here, but I'm not filling it. So Y n Z n is just All zeros and a, a one at the nth nth position, right? So this is how we fill this this part. Now let us see how we fill the uh, this part, right? So um, what we do here is um, we look at so each of these columns, right? So corresponding to this part, so the rows correspond to y one z one, y two z two, and so on. The columns correspond to each of the classes. C1, C2, up to Cm. There are n classes. So what we do is, so, so y. Let's say the entry between y1 and c1. So y1 corresponds to x1. Okay. So if x1 appears in the class c1, then we have this entry one. Okay. And let's say y2 and c3, there is a one. This means x two appears in the class C three, and also y two and C M there is a one. This means x two appears in the class C M. Okay, what is Z? Z two and C two there is a one. So Z two also corresponds to x two, but the negated form of x two. So this indicates that x two complement appears in class two. Right, so I have written this again below. If x x i is in the class J, we put a one against y i and c j. If x i complement is in the class J, we put a one against z i and c j. Right, and everything else is zero. So I am just referring to this part. Everything else is zero. So this indicates that x one appears in c one. This indicates that x X two appears in C three, right? Because it is Y two and C three. This indicates that X two complement appears in C two, right? So that's how we fill up this. Now, um, each variable may appear in multiple classes. There is no limit. So there could be many ones uh, in this part. But each class we know contains only three three literals. So if you look at this part, if you look at look under any Any class, this part, we will find exactly three ones because every column, every class contains three literals. So this part will contain three ones, no more than three ones, right? Because let's say let the let the let the, let, let, let let's say C three contains uh, x two, x five, and x six, right? So the y two, y five, and y six will be one, right? Or x two, x five complement x x six complement. So then y two z five and z six will be one, right? So, so whichever is the three literals, the rows corresponding to that will will be will be one under each clause. So once again, here uh, each row may have multiple ones. There is no limit, but each column will here will have exactly three ones. When I say here, I am just talking about inside this this box, top right box, right? So this is the part that is slightly. Uh, this is the part that only. This is the, this is the this is the only part that depends on the formula, Boolean formula, right? The other part depend on the Boolean formula only for the number of variables. But this is the part that actually looks at the formula and sees decide something. The rest is just very straightforward. The bottom left part, this part, is very easy. The entire part is zero. Okay, so there is nothing to like. You can entirely fill zeros, but there is also a leading. It is also leading this number, right? so you can also imagine it is nothing, right? So now let us come to the bottom right part. 
This is similar to the top right part. So against G1, so the, the rows are indexed G1, H1, G2, H2, G3, H3 and Gm, Hm. Right? And the columns are C1 up to Cn. So there are two M rows and M columns. So the first two rows have a 1 in the uh, under C1. So G1 and H1 have a 1 under C1 and 0 is following that. G2 and H2 have a 1 under C2 and 0 is following that. G3 and H3 have a 1 under C3 and 0 is following and so on until Gm and Hm have only two ones under uh, sorry Gm and Hm have ones only under Cm. So that completes this. Right? So once again uh, the top the, the top left is y1 and z1 have 1 under 1, y2 and z2 have 1 under 2, y3 and z3 have 1 under 3 and y and z n have 1 under n. The rest are zeros. Then bottom right g1 and h1 have 1 under c1, g2 and h2 have 1 under c2, g3 and h3 have 1 under c3 and so on up to gn, gm and hm have 1 under, 1 under cm and the rest are all zeros. This bottom left is entirely zero. right? And finally the top right, if x, xi appears in the class j, right? we put a 1 against yi and cj. If xi complement appears in class j, we put a 1 on against zi and cj. So here this indicates that x2 appears in c3, this indicates that x2 complement appears in c2. Okay? So that is how we build this. So now we can read the, the entries like this. So y1 is the number 1000000 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 100000. 0, 0, 0, 0. y2 for instance is 0, 01000000 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 001000 0, 0, 0, 0, some something and 1. right? For instance gm and hm is simply 1 because all of this is leading zeros and, and at the end is 1. So gm is 1, hm is 1, g1 is 1 followed by m minus 1 zeros, h1 is 1 followed by m minus 1 zeros. And once again, I am reiterating all numbers are in decimal. Okay. All numbers in decimal. Okay. So this is not this is not uh, binary. It is decimal. Right. So there is a reason for it. And finally, so this gives you the set S. So I have completely described what are the 2m plus 2n numbers. Right? So, this the listing of these numbers gives us at s. What is t? t is simply this number, the number that is listed here, maybe I will just color it differently. It is a number with 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, there are n ones, n ones followed by m threes. Okay, so I am just aligned it with the with the table so that it's 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 clear. So it's n ones followed by m threes. So obviously th there is no confusion with t because it, it it is not it is certainly not binary because we have threes as a digit, right? So t is also in decimal. Everything is in decimal here. Right? Even though the elements of s s have digits zero and one, it's to be read in decimal. Right. So, we have completed the construction, I have completely described it. Again, once again, I have, I have all the numbers are to be read as decimal numbers. Right. So, S I have described and the construction is clearly in polynomial time because construction mainly involves building this table and this table has 2 times m plus n rows and m plus n columns. So, 2 times m plus n whole squared number of entries which is polynomial in the um, in the in, in the size of the formula given. Right? So, um, the construction is polynomial time. So, what remains to show is the uh, correspondence. The formula is satisfiable if and only if the set has a subset that sums to t. Right? So, t also we have defined t is this number with n 1s followed by m 3s. Right? So, we need to show this correspondence. As usual, we will show it both directions. First, we will show the forward direction. We assume that the formula is satisfiable and then show that there is a subset that sums to t. Right? So, the formula is satisfiable which means there is a way to assign true false to the variables x i right? such that each clause is satisfied. Right? 
So now how do we pick the subset of S? Right. So from S we need to pick a subset. Right. So S is these these numbers. Each row corresponds to a number, and we need to get this sum, the sum that is over here. Right. So what are the? How are we going to pick? So notice that we have the first n positions are all one in T. So where do we get these ones from? So these ones have to come from here, from the top left, because the bottom left are all zeros. So what we will do is from for each basically for each i class i sorry uh, variable i. We have to pick y i or z i. We cannot pick both because then the sum will change. So we will pick only one of y i or z i. Exactly one of y i or z i for each one. So how are we going to pick it? So I'll, I, let me tell it right away. If x, so we have, so the assumption is that the formula is satisfiable. So there is a satisfying assignment. So if the satisfying assignment sets x one to true, we pick y one and not z one. If the formula If the satisfying assignment picks x1 to be false, we pick z1 and not y1. Similarly for y2, z2, and so on. If x2 is true in the satisfying assignment, we pick y2 and not z2. If x2 is false in the satisfying assignment, we pick z2 and not y2. Right? And that is the rule of uh, picking which elements in. So that that will tell us how to pick y1, z. So for each I we pick exactly one of y i or z i, right? So that will that will take care of this part of t. Now we have to handle this part of t, the 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 the, the trailing threes. How are we going to get this sum? So we have told how to pick n numbers from y one z one y two z two and so on. So now we will say how to pick the remaining numbers from g one h one g two h two and so on, right? So notice that each class has has a satisfying assignment, right? So consider class one, right? Each class has a satisfying assignment, meaning each class has a true literal. So class one contains one true literal. Suppose um, x one is the true literal in the class, and then that means x one is set to true, right? So that means since we picked y one. So if x1 is set to true, we would have picked y1, right, and not z1. And since x1 appears in the class as it is, there will be one con one one uh, th that is contributed to by y y1, right. So so if if x1 is set to true, and if it uh, if class one Is satisfied because of x1, then we get a one from the y1 for the, under that column. Suppose x2 complement, so x2 complement is there in C2. Suppose this is a this this makes the clause satisfied, which means x2 is set to false in the satisfying assignment, right? Only then x2 complement can satisfy the clause two, which means we pick the row z2. So which means this one is already there under C2. So the point is that just by the choice of y1, z1, y2, z2, and so on, under each class we already have at least one one already. So under C1, because it's a satisfying assignment, under C1 there will be one one that is contributed from this part. Under C2 there will be one one, at least one one, right? So if if that if the class has only one true literal, it will have only one one. If it Maybe the satisfying assignment can have more than one true literal, right? So then it will have more than one, one, right? So it could have all th all three could be true, right? So each clause will have at least one uh, one one under it from the top right part, and it will have at most three ones because each clause can have at most three literals. So under The under each clause, the contribution from the y's and z's will be at least one one, and at most three ones, right? But then t, the sum t, 
that the part corresponding to the sum here, this is target sum here, is all threes, right? So what if for a certain clause there is only one true literal, one satisfying uh, one true literal, which means there is only one one here, which means we need to get two more ones to get this sum three. So no no problem, we have g one that will contribute another uh, one and h one that will contribute another one, right? So we can add g one and h one. Suppose in clause two, there are two two true two true literals, right? Let's say uh, x two complement at x three, right? But not not the third the third third literal is not true. So we, but then with the target needs to be three, right? So we just include g two in the in the subset, but we do not include h two. So by including g two, we 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 will make the sum three. Suppose some other clause, let's say CM, that already has three true literals, which means it will already have three ones from the y's and z's, which means we will not include either GM or HM, right? So depending on how many uh, ones are contributed to uh, in each clause by the chosen y's and z's, so it could be one, two, or three. If it is one, we have to include both the corresponding G and H. If it is Two, then we have to include G, but not H. If it is all three, then we will exclude both G and H. Right. So that way, we will include or exclude each G and H in order to, uh, in, in such a way that we will get the target sum to be exactly three. So now, um, under each clause, we will ensure that the sum is three, and by the choice of Y and Z, we have already ensured that the sum of this part is one. And because we are seeing it as decimal, right? There is, there is, there is, it is not at all messy. There is no carry or anything, because the sum is going to be just three here. So there is nothing. There is no question of any carry bit or carry digit coming, right? And here also, it's it's completely fine. So there is no interdependence between the digits. So that that shows that when the formula is satisfiable, the set S has a subset that sums to target. So this is how we choose x and uh, y or z. Right? If x i is true, we pick y i and not z i. If x i is false, we pick z i and not y i. And uh, because of what I said, e under each column, it has at least one, one, one from the first two n rows. Right? Two n rows. This is two n rows, not z n rows. And at most three ones. And then we decide to include GJ or both GJ and HJ or exclude both GJ, exclude GJ and HJ to make the sum under the CJs to three. So this shows that the set ST or the set S has a subset that sums to T. Right. So this completes one direction of the proof. If phi is satisfiable, then the, the, the subset there is a subset that sums to T. Now the other direction. Suppose there is a subset that sums to t, right? So now let us see what is happening. We know that. So let's see. Let's try to understand some properties. So if you look at each column here, let's say the leading columns, the leading n columns, there are only two ones in each such column because the bottom part is all zeros. The top part contributes two ones exactly. If you look at the 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 last m columns. The top part corresponds to the literals of a clause, so this contributes to exactly three literals. So this uh, this contributes exactly three ones, and the bottom part gives two ones. So the number of ones here in each of these columns is going to be five, right? So the point is that since even if you include all the y's and z's and the g's and h's, right? Even then, the sum of each column here is going to be no more than five. So the the second the second these m columns, the sum is go going to be more, no more than five. The first n columns, actually, the sum is going to be no more than two. So, in even in the case, the worst case of including all these numbers, the sum the sum is going to be sum of each column is not going to be more than five, which means there will be not there will be no carry ever in the addition here. This is true even if all the numbers are picked. So this will certainly be true even if a subset is picked. 
So, this is very convenient. So, this makes the thing clean because it is not like this column can like uh, force something happen in the next column or whatever everything is separate and can be seen separate right. So, there is no carry right um, and this will be useful right. So, all the digits are 0 1 so that is also useful and this is why we want to go to the decimal system because the, because we have up to 10 so this this allows us to not carry right right. So, now there is a subset that sums to this sum. We already have told that there is not uh, we have already established that there is no carry. So, which means for, from the first 2 n rows y's and z's we can only have one of each 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 of them. So, from y 1 and z 1 we could only have one because if we pick both y y 1 and z 1 we will not get this one in t in the in the target. And if you, if you do not pick either of them, then we will have 0 here. So, we need to have exactly 1 of y 1 and z 1, exactly 1 of y 2 and z 2 and so on. And this gives us the assignment. So, from this from the uh, so the assumption is that the set S has a subset that sums to t. From the subset, we are going to build a satisfying assignment. What I just said is that for each i, either y i is there or z i is there, but not both. So, if y i is there in the subset, we make that corresponding x i to be true. If z i is there in the subset, we make that x i to be false. This is how we are going to set the, the variables. right? So, if y i is in the subset, right, set x i to true. If, y, if z i is there in the subset, we set x i to false. And as it is, we have already established that it is exactly one of y i or z i that is going to be there in the subset. Right? Now, we have to, so we have an assignment. Now, we have to show that this is satisfying. Right? Why is it satisfying? Um, so, we have a subset that sums to t. Right? We know from each, uh, each of the first two n rows, we have picked exactly one of y i or z i. Right. Right. And we know that we know that from the, so we know that the last let us say the clause columns, these columns for instance, the sum is 3, right, because there is no carry. And we know that this part can contribute at most 2, right, because there are there is at most 2, the g and h will contribute 1 each. That and the contribution that can come from this part is at most 2 for each each clause, which means each clause has at least one coming from the top part. The C 1 has at least one coming from the top part. So, suppose it is coming from some y i, right, which means that x i was set to true. And if there is a 1 under C 1 and y i, this means that x i is appearing in the positive form in the clause c 1 and and by the way we set this the variable in the satisfying in the assignment x i was set to true and that is going to satisfy the clause. Suppose the one from here is going to come from some z i. This means x i complement appears in the clause right and since z i is contributing to the to this part, uh, we uh, we know that uh, the, the, the variable x i would have been set to false, right. That is how we pick the value of that is how we set the value of x i. Since z i is in the subset, we have set x i to false, right. So, um, once again the, the the point is that first we from for each of these, uh, so we have a subset that sums to t, right, and we establish there is no carry. So, to get the leading digits all 1, we for each i we pick exactly or for each i exactly 1 of y i or z i is there in the subset, right. Both of them cannot be there, none of them also cannot be there, exactly 1 has to be there. 
if y is there we pick x i to be true if y, if z i is there we set x i to be false right and now we look at the second part second set of columns the clause columns this these parts the bottom part can contribute at most two right but then the the, the target sum has three in those parts which means there should be some contribution from the subset from the top part if the contribution comes from y i that is because the variable x i appears in the clause and if the contribution comes from y i it means that x i should be set to true in the satisfying assignment right because we we have y i in the subset right why is y i in the subset okay why is there in the subset which means x i would have been set to true if the contribution for from the top part of the clause comes from some z i we know that x i complement x i complement is there in the in the clause right otherwise that entry will not be one and further since z i was uh, was part of the subset right otherwise it will not be contributing uh, we know that x i would have been set to false so in in that case also the clause is set to the clause uh, there is one literal in the clause that is that is satisfying the clause so in either case the clause is satisfied so in the last m columns we need the sum to be 3 each and the contribution of the bottom part is is at most 2 so for each call each cj there must be contribution of at least one from yi or zi if the contribution of, is from yi then xi appears in the clause and it is set to true if the contribution is from zi then xi complement appears in the in that clause and xi is set to false which means xi xi complement is true and hence satisfies that clause so in whichever case the clause is satisfied right so whichever case the clause is satisfied and that that shows that if the if the if the set has a subset that sums to t the formula is satisfied or satisfiable that is a satisfying assignment and that completes the proof of the correspondence that phi is satisfiable if and only if s has a subset that sums to t right and that completes the proof of the np completeness of subset sum so there you go you have yet another problem which is just talking about sets of numbers and some subset achieving a target sum it's entirely different from graphs and having cliques or independent sets or boolean formulas it's a different type of problem but that also is np complete right so just to summarize um to show that it is an np was easy right a standard guess and verify approach to show that it is uh, np complete we have to reduce it from three set so given a three set instance we build these numbers which are entire whose digits are entirely zero one but we view them as decimal numbers and uh, 2m plus 2n numbers where m is a number of clauses in the formula and n is a number of variables and the target sum is 11111 n ones followed by m threes right and then we showed that if the formula is satisfiable there exists a subset and if uh, that sums to the target and if there is a subset that sums to the target the formula is satisfiable right and obviously the construction of this uh, is in polynomial time because the number of entries is polynomial in uh, the size of the formula and uh, that completes the proof so and that completes the lecture number 54 and um i'll see you in the next lecture where we'll see where we'll see yet another uh, np complete problem thank you